Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. Charlie Herbst is the Associate Cape County Commissioner for the Second District. Today he will talk with us about what is going on in the county and any upcoming projects. Charlie? Good to see you. Good to see you too, Michael. Thank how you been? For the invitation. Great. Good. Uh, Cape County, so how long have you been a county commissioner uh, for? It's my 10th year. 10th year? District commissioner, yes. Wow. And, and I know, I, I, the little that I know about, about, about what happens, um, each commissioner kind of has their own piece that they oversee, is that, is that correct or? Uh, yes, uh, the county is made of three commissioners. Uh, one is presiding commissioner, Clint Tracy, and he's elected by the uh, citizens of the entire county. And then uh, the county then is split up by population into two districts, District 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, district 1 is Paul Kepper uh, responsibility and it's pretty much the city of Jackson and the out county. And then District 2, because of population, is the city of Cape Girardeau, of which I'm the representative. Okay. And I know there's, there's a lot happening in the county, always a lot happening. We were talking before uh, we started today just about the variety of things uh, that you have your hands in. Um, and let's just go through a few of those. Um, talking about uh, budgeting and, and office space for office holders. Yes, so as you asked, uh, previous question is uh, commissioners do have responsibilities and uh, the three commissioners do kind of divide up the duty some. Uh, I'm over building grounds. I also share that with uh, Mr. Kepper and then also IT and then the juvenile division budget. Uh, Mr. Kepper uh, primarily takes care of road and bridges and also shares in building and grounds. Uh, Mr. Tracy is over the parks department and emergency operations for the county. Uh, we all kind of share in those duties though, day okay. to day for that. And then uh, as commissioners then we are responsible for providing budgets to all of the county office holders to perform their duties as prescribed by the statutes. I know a big undertaking recently was the, the new courthouse um, and I remember hearing you talk about kind of what went into, uh, you mentioned materials and those sorts of things. Yes. Um, some really neat stories on how some of those facilities were put together. Yeah, so, so in 2013 when I came on the commission, uh, we uh, decided to do a really comprehensive capital improvement study for the county and looking at our our space needs and facility needs and maybe some some maintenance items that have been put off for many years on, sure. on a tight budget and so um, we, we are still using that 2013 study that we did okay uh, you know sometimes we think in government we do a study for something and it sits on a shelf because it has to be funded and be appropriated and so we have really dug into that comprehensive study and uh, one of our, the biggest projects we had to do was the new courthouse uh, in Jackson, uh, which we started in 2018 and moved into right in the middle of COVID uh, in 2020. And, you know, we were on a limited budget for that. And so we looked at ways to partner. And one of our partners in that building was Missouri Vocational Enterprises, which is our prison system. Right. Um, they have their own factories to build furniture and to build uh, cubicles and chairs and, and millwork. And, and so we utilized a lot of that to help uh, we, we saved around $1.25 million by using the prison system to outfit our courtrooms. Wow. Although we still, in government, you don't really save money. We spent that one two point five into the building itself to give us more scope in providing space for the courts. Okay, so you mentioned that, that 2013 comprehensive study. There are still yes. some things on that list that you're looking to hopefully accomplish someday? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, one of them that we did uh, check off was the, the juvenile department. Uh, the county provides the budget for the juvenile division, although the, it is a state of Missouri court uh, division. Okay. Uh, and they were in two different locations and, and needed space. And so that was one of the items. So we were able to, to put them in a 10,000 square foot administration building to operate. Uh, the next item that we, we are embarking on now is uh, the, the new jail is now 23 years old. Yeah. Uh, and so it was built to a 20 year standard. And so we are now embarking on another 20 year uh, standard of an, a jail addition, uh, which that was something that was identified also in this comprehensive study to do that and along with that uh, we have the 1908 courthouse uh, which hasn't been renovated since 1909, 1908 or so. So we're working on that project also. So there's always something. Always something. <laughs> um, I know you also obviously have a lot, a lot of roads and bridges uh, that you got, have your hands in. 
Yes, we do. So, so Mr. Kepper gets to wear the hat as the, as the road commissioner. We have approximately 450 miles of roads in the county. About half are paved. Um, we ha do have a uh, half cent sales tax that, that goes to the road fund. In Cape County, we don't have a road property tax. It's all paid by, by sales tax, the collection. Okay. Um, and uh, maintaining those roads is a challenge. Again, the cost of items have, have increased. Uh, the cost of our material to put down on the roads is, is twice what it was about three years ago. So instead of paving six or seven miles of brand new road a year, we're only doing two or three miles of road a year. But we have a really comprehensive program to make sure that the roads we have are maintained and kept up so they don't deteriorate. My family moved to Cape in 89 and you know, there's not a better entry into uh, Cape Girardeau Jackson area than Cape County Park. You know, when you come off of off of I-55, just a beautiful park and, and I know that you know, there's several acres of park that, that you guys oversee as well. Yes, sir. We, we are very fortunate that uh in, in the 60s, the, the county had property uh, that they were able to acquire and some property that was donated to the county uh, and was dedicated to be a county park. And, and many people don't remember any longer that the county poor farm where indigent uh, folks that were found indigent by the courts were actually assigned to live. And there was an actual, where North County Park is, that was a farm. Mm. And they raised, raised food there for themselves and then also sold that food. And so uh, as other services and state agencies took over the role of, of working with indigent folks uh, in the county and the court system that was converted uh, in in the early 80s into an actual park system. So we have about 350 acres that we operate as a county park. How about a minute left? Um, is there anything on the specific horizon coming up that uh, that, that is a, a big project or uh, I know there's some ballot initiatives coming up in, in, in April? Yes, yes in April we have the, the, the marijuana uh, sales tax and, and we just thought it was uh, prudent to put that on the ballot for the citizens to decide for themselves uh, for that tax. Um, well, also the ongoing problem or projects with the new jail and then also with the new courthouse or the old courthouse, but uh, the renovation of that uh, to make that space uh, so that we can expand some of our current county offices. And the with that sales tax, that will be a 3% sales tax, is that correct? Yes, it will be a 3% sales tax. It will be stacked on top of, of normal sales taxes. Okay. Uh, and uh, there has been some discussion among the commission that whatever that revenue is, that perhaps that we may look at where we budget that uh, for the best need for the public. All right, Charlie, it goes quick. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. We'll do it again.